Hey everybody, what's up? It's Joel, AKA The Daily Guru, and today for the Saturday Smorgasbord, I have the one and only Ethan Fixell with me, right here, this That's guy. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of word association. Uh, earlier in the week, I went to Tumblr and Facebook, and if you don't follow me there, you really should be, and I asked you guys for some band names, artists, songs, so we're just gonna take one of those randomly from the list, and we're gonna see where things go. So give me a number between one and 60. Uh, I'm feeling 12. 12. Up on Cripple Creek. Wow. Wow. The band, huh? The band, yeah. Start out right. Home. I actually think it's their 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 worst, I don't want to say worst song, it's my least favorite band song. What the is band your favorite song. band song? My favorite The Band song, you have to say The Band the song band in every song. time. Yeah. yeah. My favorite The Band song is uh, Dixie. When uh, The night, night they, they drove, drove Dixie, Dixie down. down. Yeah. Gorgeous song. He's awesome on that. Yeah. Helm is amazing on yeah. that. Uh, drumming is amazing. Vocals are awesome. That's yeah. my favorite. Cripple Creek is alright. It, it reminds good. me of like of like a Murray Hill uh, bar, with where it's closing. It's closing. It's like two o'clock, sure, sure, or three o'clock yeah, yeah, a.m. and like yeah. they're all drinking and you know. I mean, it's a, it's a cool song to me, but I too I like when they get a little more soulful because that's yeah. what they could do is they could really bring that beautiful kind of country soul and and it's almost that's like almost like a pop song for them. We'll go with the very last item on the list for right now. Ani DeFranco. That is that a, that's just an artist we're getting here. That's an artist we're getting here. Okay, look, I, I'm going to be the first. I don't know you, what your Ani DeFranco opinion is, but I'm going to be the first to defend her as one of the greatest female artists of our time. Okay. I, I will stand up for her immediately. I think she's uh, got a number of songs which are amazing uh, on their own as just uh, you know pieces of art. And I think that her guitar playing, ridiculous, mm -hmm. unparalleled. She's got her own style of Absolutely. finger picking that nobody can touch. And uh, you know, obviously, she's the voice of a specific crowd. I, I agree with you. I think again, we have somebody who gets a bad reputation there. You know, yeah. I, I think people throw her at the far end of the feminist spectrum right. and just write her off. She's a very talented musician. She can write like it's nobody's business. Yeah. It's not my taste. It's just not. That's fair. But she's one of those artists kind of like, I don't know, Bob Dylan in a way that you might not like the way they sound or what they're singing, but you have to respect the fact that they're phenomenally talented. Oh. At their... Do me a favor. If you do not know Ani DeFranco, go get Not A Pretty Girl or Dilate, the album after. Both are her at her peak right here. You're hearing it here from Do me. It. Do a, it. A, a straight guy. Do it. All right, we're going to go with, uh, let's go low. Number four. I'm going to go with number four. What do we have? Interesting. This song has been coming up a lot lately. What was selected was the song Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian if you Rhapsody. missed my Music Myths two days ago, go check out Music Myths number 13 because I talk about what the song is actually about, those lyrics. But let's talk about Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Well, I have my own plug as well. I actually just posted a YouTube video in which I performed that song with my brother when I was only eight or nine years old. My brother is four or five. We lip synced the entire thing. It's a phenomenal display of, si of sibling rivalry. You have to see it. It's in the, it's in the uh, show more in the uh, little notes under the video. I'm putting it there. Cool, check that out. Internet magic. It's, uh, it's creepy and amazing. But that song obviously inspired me as a, as a kid. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. Uh, obviously, I heard it for the first time in Wayne's World. Uh, turned so many people onto it. And and what a scene that that is a timeless scene in yeah. film. It's it's become iconic. I believe it recharted when that song yeah. came out. I think I believe it went back onto the charts. I know it recharted because I was one of the people who bought the single. Okay. It came as a single. Uh, the B-side was sh The Show Must Go On. So I bought that single and I remember seeing that it had uh, recharted when I was even a kid. I was like, wow, this is a new band? Right. Well, at least hopefully uh, it turned more people onto Queen because, I mean, oh, of course. You know, th th that's just a band beyond bands. They are unbelievable. And there's a lot of bands imitating Queen now. I mean, obviously you have the darkness and that whole sure. showy, showy thing, but there's a new band out. Actually, they're not that new. They, they have like four or five albums out. It's called Foxy Shazam. Foxy Shazam. Do you know Foxy Shazam? I do not know Foxy Shazam. I just stumped the guru. Dude, you need to know Foxy Shazam. I'm just gonna leave. Do you want? Do you want the show now? Channel, I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking over. Channel's yours. It's the Daily Ethan, right here. Same address. Foxy Shazam. Foxy Shazam is this. I'm so shocked you don't know them because they, their old school stuff is like Gogol Bordello. Okay. And they sort of morphed into this slowly into this glam rock band that is like Freddie Mercury incarnate. It's it's amazing. Wow. Let's go with um, twenty one. Twenty one. The year that I learned how to drink. Twenty one. And then threw up. 21, is that? Wow. Oh, really? Really? Car Carol King? Carol King. Do you have anything to say about Carol King? I have nothing. Can I'm we, not a fan. Can we like not talk about I'm not about a fan. Carole Tapestry King? is an okay record, but um, let's give me another number. Hold on, let me call my dad. Maybe okay. he'll be able to tell you us. You know what? I'll, I'll call Carole my mom. King. She yeah, likes shitty music, so. Hey, dad? Do you hey. want to talk about Carol King? Let's talk about something that's irrelevant to our generation, shall yeah, we? Yeah, no, I don't care. Great either. songwriter, I know. Yeah. Yeah, she couldn't sing. Yeah, no. I couldn't even name a song that she sang. 
No, no, the, I heard it's not about Mick Jagger. Oh, the Friends song. That's yeah. what Friends are. Yeah, yeah, we're not interested. I'll, I'll, okay, see, I'll see you later. Bye. Yeah, let's move on. Okay, give me another number. Um, 55. 55. You can't drive that. You can't drive 55. Ooh, hurt. Ooh, Like hurt. the Nine Inch Nails hurt? So let's go with that. I, I've spoken about it a little bit here and there. The yeah. Nine Inch Nails that was later covered, of course, by Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash, yeah. Which could arguably be a better version of the song. That was exactly what I spoke is about. Is it? Yeah, I was, uh, I was on an Ask the Guru segment. I believe the Cash version is actually better. Yeah, but... I, I think it's, you know, it's hard to say. I think that they both have completely different things. Mm -hmm. They're bringing different things to the table. But I think, uh, you know, that song in the context of Downward, Downward Spiral is awesome. Downward Spiral is yeah. So, I mean, the, the first couple Nails records, you know, yeah. Pretty Hate Machine yes. is just, you know, and even Broken, the, the, the EP. Oh, before. totally. Awesome. I mean, amazing. Oh. I think that that song hurt, like I said, I think that that's why I think it, it worked in the context of what they were doing as a whole, you know, in that whole Downward Spiral thing, it works amazingly. I think that Johnny Cash's version of Hurt is mm -hmm. an amazing song in itself made by Johnny Cash. It showed, I think it showed to a lot of people that there was actually amazing lyricism behind what Trent was doing, yeah. behind, behind the noise, or behind the music, if you Ooh. will. Here's a question for you. Who would win in a fist fight? Live Johnny Cash, uh -huh. or uh, post-roid Trent? Like when I'm he was gonna, on roids. I'm gonna go with live Johnny Cash, because so? I just, he's wow. just, he's a bad dude, man, and mm. you know, I just, I won't, I won't take anyone in a fight over Johnny Cash. I think Trent would, would back down too. I think he'd be afraid to right. hurt Johnny. Right. Who would just pop a cap in his ass. He wouldn't even fight. He'd just shoot him. That's it. I don't yeah. think he can go anywhere from there. I think that's kind of it. That's it. That's it. That's all we have. See you tomorrow. Peace out.